Hi guys, I'm recording this where I can in a park. Um, there is a sound of children playing nearby in the background. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but if you can and it's triggering, I apologize. Um, I am currently really dehydrated as usual because as much as I try to stay hydrated, it can be difficult out here. And I was going to wait to make this video till my husband came back with water but he's been gone for a little bit and I am just dying to make this video so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it um, if he does come back and bring water I hope y'all will excuse me if I pause to drink some so part of why I am so dying to um, to make this video is that I was planning already to make this about the topic of how to help the homeless as I am homeless and have been homeless on and off since I was a kid and I was trafficked from birth up to that point and into my homelessness as a teenager and so I felt like you know I'm about as qualified as could be at least for my age I'm 23 and um, I wanted to keep it really light and not talk too much about trauma but something really fucked up just happened and it's caused me to be in a really emotional state and I feel like I might as well just go ahead and start by talking about what happened because it's going to just set a foundation for everything I want to say and I guess this video is just meant to be a bit heavier it seems like that's where the universe is it seems like that's just what's what's supposed to happen right now for some reason so Right before I went to do this, I was at a, another park, and before we left, I went into the bathroom, and I walked into a very specific stall for a very specific reason, and happened to find a nice iPhone right there. And I'm on the street, and I don't know where my next meal is going to come from, really. <laughs> like, I think we, we're going to have a little bit of money to eat tonight but not much and we need to save every penny right now that we do have for something important related to our survival so I didn't know really where our next meal is going to come from and I knew that I could easily take this phone and sell it on the street and feed myself and my husband for a little while and I was sure that whoever owned it was wealthy and probably could afford to get a new one however I decided that it would not be worth it to me to get the negative karma that I felt I would get from taking it, even if it would be an honest redistribution of wealth unfairly withheld from us. So I did my very best to get it back to the person. And just as I finally figured out how um, to try and get it back to that person, they showed up as we were still waiting nearby in case they came back and the person whose phone it was seemed just really freaked out by the fact that they had lost their phone and they just said thank you and quickly left I don't know if they've really even registered that we were homeless we were obviously homeless we had all our stuff with us and you know we wear clothes that are all patchwork and fading and stuff um, but the person they were with definitely noticed us. That person, who I presume to be their spouse, um, immediately struck me, to be honest, as a sociopath. The energy that I felt and the overwhelming smugness and arrogance that was just dripping off of them as they kind of leered at us, that's honestly what it felt like. Um, it just was really overwhelming and I was like, wow, I am in the presence of a very not nice person. <laughs> and they did not say a word to me, they just um, stared at us with this smug smile and um, and then they quickly left with their partner and I was disappointed honestly that they did not give us anything to compensate us for the fact that we were homeless and we actually made the effort to return a very expensive piece of electronics to them to very wealthy people it seemed but it really wasn't even about the money like I didn't really do it with expectation of anything financial in return material it was the fact that there was not only no acknowledgement of the fact that we were homeless and we did this for them, 
um, when, I mean, almost nobody would have. And if we hadn't, somebody else probably would have taken it. Almost assuredly, they would not have gotten their phone back. Um, might not even have been another homeless person who took it, but I just would be very surprised if it was still there. But um, it was really the fact that not only did they not acknowledge that, but I felt real, like, judgment and, like, a shaming energy from them. And um, I tried to give the person whose phone it actually was the benefit of the doubt because I got the feeling that if they were with a sociopath, maybe this wasn't the uh, best thing for them, the situation they were in, and maybe I shouldn't begrudge them and their wealth or their scatteredness too much. They just seemed very scattered very traumatized um, but then we had to stop along the way to this park so that my husband could run an errand he went inside this building and when he came out he apparently almost walked right into this couple <laughs> and the one whose phone it was apparently gave him this look of tremendous revulsion and hatred the face he made was very ugly <laughs> even though he is a beautiful man. The face he made reflected ugliness in the person he was imitating. And it was a look that I know too well from people with money. And um, all of my forgiveness really went away. <laughs> and I just felt absolute rage. And I'm not sorry that I returned their phone to them. I'm truthfully even happier that I did because it shoves in their face what awful people they seem to be. Um, and it proves that people in poverty are routinely kinder, more sane, and more sober in mind and body than people like them. And one of the only things, though, that's keeping me from totally losing my shit about it is one, remembering that I'm just going to get good karma from this while they're just going to get bad karma from this. And also, something happened earlier that really warmed my heart <laughs> something that didn't just make my day I think it just made my whole life you know the phrase like oh that made my day sometimes I'll say like oh that made my year when I was really good well this just made my whole life honestly um, this really badass punk rock looking little boy who probably was no more than like nine years old earlier today stopped and saw me and um, after taking it seemed like a strong look at me and then moving on he returned and gave me a gift and it was not something that cost more than a couple dollars but it was priceless to me absolutely priceless and simply just seeing this kid and what a sweetheart he was um, and how just truly badass he was and the spirit of punk rock it just um, like I said, it made my whole life. It was one of those times where I realized that, oh my God, like there is actual hope for the future. <laughs> um, my husband just returned with the water, so I'm gonna drink it now. Sorry about this. This is awkward. Okay, um, that is much better. So, thinking about that and the contrast between that little boy and then this couple and this little boy he looked like he was in poverty you know, he did not look like he might have had much more than I do so the contrast between the kindness from a child in poverty and then the cruelty from so-called adults with obvious riches it just um it brings home for me what the point is of my life why I continue fighting why I continue surviving and trying to be a better person even though every day people like the well-off people I was just talking about um, really challenge my empathy you know most homeless people would not have returned that phone and I would not blame them and I would hope that you wouldn't either and most homeless people if they did by a miracle forgo their fear of not knowing if they were going to be able to survive through the next day um, and return something to people who have that much. If that happened to them, if those people treated them like that, they probably would never do such a thing again. Now I'm going to do that kind of thing again. It only motivates me more 
to do so, but I have a different outlook on this kind of thing than most people do. Homeless or not, I have taken people's cruelty and it's been ammunition for me to be kind. Um, but that's not most people in my experience. And that doesn't make them bad, it just... <sighs> Unfortunately, the cycle of violence, it won't end without people like me deciding to end it. So, and I want to be clear that I don't think that it's an act of violence if a homeless person were to take that phone and sell it. I think that would be a reasonable action or person being oppressed trying to continue their life. But showing those people kindness, I think, was a great action that me and my husband took to try and end the cycle of violence. And uh, that they did not understand it, really. Um, well, it just shows why it's important to do that kind of thing. So I did not mean to talk so long about all this. I think I just talked for way longer than I meant to. Um, but I guess you could just consider this a testimony. Um, I was going to let other parts step in and say more. I really didn't mean to go on like that. But I'm autistic and dissociative. And because of all my traumas and my hypersensitivity, I have a very hard time explaining things um, with gravity. I tend to explain the full depth of my thoughts if not the actual full depth, then I still explain in great depth what I'm thinking um, every time I try to talk about anything <laughs> um, because it's just the way that I'm wired and I do believe my traumas have heightened that. So anyways, my point in sharing this was to say this is what you're up against. If you want to help homeless people um, truly help us, uh, you need to on a personal level, I, I feel, actually gain our trust even if it's in indirect ways, even if you were never physically seen by us or you don't socialize with us, um, you still need to carry an energy that um, we can feel, even if it's from afar, um, that is trustworthy. But we need to be able to feel it through the thick, thick barrier of all of the trauma created by people like the ones, like the couple that I just talked about just now. Um, you know, little kids like that boy, um, and other such people, they do a lot to um, help mitigate that. You know, when kindness is that genuine, it really does help. But there is so much damage that you have to not push through because it's all really about respecting, accepting our boundaries um, and making space for our traumas. But you have to make space for it and understand that, that this is what you're up against. If you wanna gain homeless people's trust as a person with money, um, even if you are poor, if you still live inside, if you still have anything, shit, even if you're homeless, if you want to gain other homeless people's trust, you have to be up against people like that, um, who every day try to stamp out the goodness that's in our hearts. Even if those people didn't mean to do that, I think one of them was genuinely malicious, and I think the other one was just ignorant. I wouldn't be surprised if... Um, the one whose phone it was, didn't judge us until their partner said something horrible and it got into their head because I really did get a vibe of abuse there. And I don't wish to blame the victim. Um, but knowing that that person looked at my husband like that after what we did for them, I mean, shit, even at all, but after what we did for them, um, they didn't even consider doing anything nice for us, it seems, um, or even just acknowledging it. They just looked at us with hatred and disgust. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they threw their phone away out of anger that a homeless person had touched it without ever considering that we did them a favor. Um, but I don't want to get lost in my anger here. So um, what I'm trying to say is just that um, if you want to be helpful to us, you have to understand that this is the kind of thing we deal with all the time. You know, I just talked to somebody who's been on the street, I think, for a, a long time. Um, I'm not actually sure how long, but they've certainly suffered out here. And uh, they told me that, um, they told me about two occasions in which people um, tried to physically, chemically burn them. And then in one occasion, them and someone else. Um, once through putting, burning chemicals into a trash can that they knew that they looked through uh, for things to, sur to use to survive like, say, food or cans or things like that, I'd imagine. Something maybe they could sell in order to make a few bucks to get through the day. Someone put burning chemicals in the trash can to burn their hands, and they did 
burn their hands. And someone also gave them and someone they knew drugs that were not really drugs. They were a corrosive substance um, that supposedly, according to this person, burned their friend's arm when he tried to inject it. And um, I believe it. I believe it. I have encountered those people. I'm a survivor of child trafficking, so I know what kind of people are out there and the lengths they'll go to to hurt those who are vulnerable. Um, but it sounds like in both cases the people were of monetary privilege and um, probably felt like they were doing a good thing. They probably felt self-righteous about it, like they were doing a good thing. So that's the kind of thing that, <laughs> that you are up against. But every bit of kindness helps. And that's something I really want to emphasize here with the stories I've just told. Um, what hurts the most, I, from my experience um, with myself and how I feel about all this and with other people, it seems like what hurts the most for, for the majority of us who've been out on the streets is the cruelty. You don't have to give us a dollar. You don't have to even house us, although that would be great. Um, if you simply acknowledge that we are human beings, if you simply don't treat us with absolute cruelty, especially when we do something kind for you, you will make a huge difference in our lives. There are more concrete things that you can do. And I think I'm going to try and share a few things now before this time's out, but I might have to do this in another part. Um, there are more concrete things that you can do, but the absolute most basic thing is to act with compassion towards us, whether you give us anything material or not. To act with compassion, to try and balance out the kind of vicious cruelty that we are met with on a daily basis. Okay, so as for concrete things, um, I have to drink a little more water, I'm sorry. It's hot. And I'm out in this all day. It's finally starting to cool off, but it's still pretty warm. So, I was thinking, well, I didn't really plan much for this video. I just wanted to kind of speak from my heart. I was thinking that something useful could be to address people's uh, common, you know, house people's common misgivings about giving to us. Um, one, the most number one thing that I, I've heard is people saying they don't want to give to us because they think we're all drug addicts or they think we might be drug addicts and they don't feel comfortable with the idea that we will spend money on drugs. 